take responsibility for your life. Achieve fulfillment with recovery. Check out responsiblerecovery.net. And so I ended up going into one of the longest blackouts and I literally drank until I couldn't physically drink anymore. I, I stood up and that, that was the moment in my life, literally the exact moment that I knew that I had to get help. I stood up and I looked around me because I had just quit my job yet again because I was too drunk to go in. And I told, and I was very honest with her too. I literally texted her. I said, I can't come in because I'm too drunk. And I apologized and I just avoided talking to her ever again. And I didn't have rent for the next month because I'd spent it, spent literally every penny of it on booze. And you're paying like double when you're getting stuff delivered because of the delivery fee. Like uh, the amount of money I wasted. And then the food for when you're hungover, it's horrible. Or the Ubers to go get it. And so I literally stood up uh, and looked around me. This was March 5th, 2018. I stood up and I looked around me and I hated everything that I saw. I saw myself, I saw everything you know, that I had worked for slipping through my fingers. I didn't have any money. I couldn't pay rent. And I feel a sense of responsibility to my roommate. He's one of my best friends. We're on the lease together. I can't screw him over like that and not have, you know, get us kicked out. I, you know, I, I had a bank account closed because I couldn't pay it. I, you know, I wasn't able to hang out with my parents or my sister because I was always ashamed of myself and like everything that I was going through. I didn't have a job, like I couldn't be around my friends. I didn't feel like I could be my true self around my friends because like I'm just continually getting drunk and I don't have anything to offer in the relationship because all I am is a drunk. And so I hated it. And so I was like, okay, maybe I need someone else to help me. And so I started to look for rehabs and I didn't want to do outpatient. I, I knew that I kind of needed to do something <clears throat> where I moved in only not only because like I needed the intensive care like whatever the attention I guess the constant uh supervision but because I wanted to leave San Francisco I needed to leave San Francisco I couldn't stay there and be ashamed of myself in order to get better I knew I had to be at a place where I didn't feel judged nobody knew what I'd done or where I'd been through or any of that stuff I could start clean and that was really important to me. And I don't know why. Higher power stuff right here. Something I just chose Santa Cruz. I didn't choose any other uh, any other city outside of Santa Cruz. I literally called places in San Francisco and in Santa Cruz. And here's what they don't tell you about getting help. It is hard. You can ask a thousand times for help and receive a thousand no's. And that to me was so frustrating when I'm calling and they're saying, hey, we'll give them a call because I didn't have insurance and I barely have any money. I have a little bit left in my like MRA account, like this medical account that I had at the restaurant. Um, it's going to, it was about to expire soon though. So I was like, I got to get this going. Um, and I lit, I was getting so frustrated because literally every, every single place was a no. The only yes I got was from new life in Santa Cruz. And so it's, actually kind of interesting another higher power thing so I went to go actually sell some of my stuff um to pay because I figured if I get into a place in Santa Cruz I'm gonna need a bus ticket I don't drive and I'm certainly at this point not gonna burden anybody that I know with getting me there because I I know I have to do this myself I have to get myself there do this myself so I can show people I really want this and I really am worthwhile and so no one was still getting back to me. It's super frustrating. I still hadn't heard it back. Everyone had said no. Um, I sold my stuff and I was at McDonald's and I'm sitting there and I'm like, you know what? Because I've never been homeless. I've, you know, I've been very far from homeless. Um, like I said, my parents were pretty well off. And so I've been very fortunate in my life to never be anywhere near that. So my low, my down and out, my lowest point looks different than other, other people's because of the quality of life that I've been very, very, very fortunate to have. And so I knew I was at my lowest, lowest, lowest point when I thought I was going to be homeless because that to me was unacceptable. That was embarrassing to me. Like, how am I going to tell, like, how am I going to lie to my parents about this one? How could I possibly lie to them 
Like, not not how could I, but literally, what's the lie going to be, you know? And uh, I had a plan, too. I was going to join a gym, and I was going to keep my stuff there because you can shower. I'm serious. <laughs> so you can sleep there, and you can work out, and you can shower and go find a job until you can get enough money for a, an apartment. So I had a plan because I, I just couldn't fathom the idea of being an actual homeless person. Like, I don't even, th- I don't know if my family would have let me do that. But I wasn't about to test it because I was so ashamed of myself at that point. And I really like, I couldn't imagine that anybody else liked me. Like, so I thought I didn't like myself because no one else liked me. But it turns out I didn't like myself. I, you know, I thought no one liked me because I didn't like myself. It was the total freaking opposite. And so I really had pushed everything to the absolute limits that I could without absolutely hating myself and honestly at this point I wanted things to end I wanted to die just so I wouldn't have to experience this anymore just so this would end I wanted it to just end already like it was a miserable existence drinking all the time like when I first started drinking I thought it was awesome because you're drunk and all this stuff but living in a constant state like in a constant stupor is horrible. It's not a quality of life that I wish on anybody. It's horrible. And to a self-induced stupor is horrible. Like, cause you know that you're doing this to yourself and it's, you just gotta, and, and they make it seem so easy. Just pull yourself up, just pull yourself out of it. But there's so many issues behind it of where I am and why I'm here and stuff like that, that I have to work on first. And so like, literally like I needed to work on those things. So like just being a dry drunk doesn't work. You gotta work on the issues behind it. Like they're, like I said at the beginning, you are your circumstances, your experiences, the people who raised you, like your surroundings, all of that really plays into who you are and why you are. And so, um, it was just the amount of self-hatred I had at the end was insurmountable. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine that anyone loved me still. I really thought my parents hated me. I thought my sister hated me. I couldn't, I just couldn't see why they would love me. Because I've been a bad person, I've been flaky, I've been a liar, and I know they're not stupid, they know I've lied to them, like, come on. And so, anyway, so I'm at McDonald's, right, and in my head, I'm like, you know what, if I'm going to be homeless, this thing that I never thought I'd be and is absolutely horrible, I might as well get drunk, so I don't remember that I have to be homeless, right? And I was thinking, I'll hide in my room so, so my roommate can't see me, so he sees that I'm drinking again, and I was like, okay, well, there's a liquor store up the street, there's a liquor store over there. I'm planning what size bottle I'm going to get because I still wanted money in my pocket when I become homeless, you know, for food or whatever. And so I'm standing up to throw out my tray and the intake supervisor calls me. Literally right when I'm standing up to go get more alcohol, not before, not after, literally as I'm making up my mind to go get more alcohol, she calls me and she goes, hey, I think we might have a space for you. And that was the first yes I'd heard. And I was like, are you kidding me? And then on top of that, that medical account that I had, had $733 in it. Do you know how much it costs to get into New Life? $700. What? Are you kidding me? That for me was such a huge sign that I was doing exactly what I was supposed to do. And she told me, she was like, make sure, cause I've never had been drug tested before. I, when I went to treatment, I did it on my own terms. I've never had to, go to jail or anything like that so I don't know how drug tests work right so I'm thinking they they can go far back so I'm like okay so I'll uh I'll make sure not to drink because I I don't want to not get in right I end up taking three different buses Amtrak BART and walking just to get there it takes me five hours just to get there but I did it I I packed my suitcase I packed all my shit I found a roommate for my roommate so that he didn't have to move out like I did all of this like I wanted this so bad because I just, I didn't want to be that person anymore. I knew I've always had potential. Like I've always seen like who I could be and that just wasn't it. I hadn't met my potential yet. And so I knew like I had to be a different person. Like I couldn't spend the rest of my life or even the rest of my twenties. I only got a year left, but I can't spend the rest of my twenties wasting and doing this bullshit. I just, I couldn't. So I get to new life and I'm, you know, I think part of the reason I excelled there, three reasons. A, 
I put myself there. I chose to be there. I searched for this place. I was stoked when they said yes. The only other place that said yes was a person who called me. So I was looking for um, places in March. This person called me in June and was like, hey, do you still need a place? If I'd still been out there drinking, I would be dead. Take responsibility for your life. Achieve fulfillment with recovery. Check out responsiblerecovery.net.